In this video, we're going to learn the third method for making cream soups. So for this method, um, we're going to separate the roux uh, from the soup base, cook them both separately, and then add them together. So to start, we need to go ahead and add our raw vegetables uh, in with our stock base. So uh, we're making a cream of broccoli soup, and we're going to use some chicken stock. I'm going to go ahead and add in my chopped onions, my broccoli florets, into my simmering stock. Okay. <clears throat> and we're going to allow this to simmer. The next thing we need to do is make our roux. So we're going to make a white roux, which is the uh, least cooked of the roux. We're just trying to get the raw flour taste uh, out of the flour, uh, start to get a nice little nuttiness, but we're not really trying to change the color um, like we would in a blonde or brown roux. So I've added my clarified butter uh, over about medium heat, and I want to go ahead and let my butter melt completely before adding in my flour. So I have my clarified butter melted. I'm going to go ahead and add in my flour. Go ahead and dump all the flour in at once. And just stir until you have a nice smooth paste. I'm going to make sure that flour is kind of dispersed throughout the clarified butter. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and stir uh, occasionally until we get to our white roux. White roux goes pretty quickly, probably about two minutes over medium heat like this, and we'll start to get that uh, change in aroma from raw flour to a nice cooked uh, aroma. So it's been about two minutes, uh, and you can see the, the color of our roux hasn't really changed, but the aroma has. We have a nice little nuttiness starting to come through, and really it doesn't smell like raw flour anymore. You can also see that our uh, vegetables here have just kind of been simmering. Uh, that broccoli is starting to cook. So at this point, stop cooking our, uh, our vegetable base uh, to go ahead and add in our roux. Um, generally, we want to let the roux cool a little bit. You can see that I had turned off the flame and just let it cool down uh, a little bit. Some chefs will actually uh, chill the roux and then add in the cold roux. Um, I don't think that's necessary. We can certainly add in hot roux to hot liquid. We just need to quickly stir, uh, to quickly whisk it in. What we don't want to do is just pour it in and then walk away. We want to make sure we have all of our mise en place together, in this case, uh, our nice firm whisk, so that we can quickly uh, incorporate it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my roux and just stir here. Sure, I get all that roux out of my pan. Okay, go ahead and stir. And I really want to make sure I stir well, whisk well to make sure that uh, that roux is completely dispersed uh, through the soup here. I don't want to have uh, any lumps uh, in my soup. And if I don't disperse that roux through, I will get some lumps. So we're going to go ahead and let this simmer for uh, about uh, 15 or 20 minutes until that broccoli is uh, nice and tender. And we'll check back in with you then and uh, go over pureeing. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. Uh, our soup's been simmering. Uh, we've gotten the nappe consistency that uh, we're looking for, uh, and our broccoli is nice and soft. 
So we're ready for uh, the next step, which is going to be to puree our soup. So in our first video, uh, we used a food mill for cream soup method one. Uh, for cream soup method two, uh, we used an immersion blender uh, to puree the soup. And in this video, we're going to use uh, an upright blender. So to use this blender, I'm gonna go ahead and add my broccoli and my soup into my blender base. Put my lid on. <clears throat> and then I'm going to want to take a clean side towel and put it over top of the blender. Uh, but this is just an extra uh, layer of security. Um, if we use the blender correct, it shouldn't slosh up and splash out. Um, but I always do this just kind of as a safety, and I'll show you why. Um, so this blender actually has a variable speed, okay? So I can have this blender set to higher variable, so I'm gonna want this blender set to variable, and I always like to start uh, on the lowest setting, so that when I turn it on, it starts at a nice slow pace instead of blasting all at once. If I just went and just turned this blender on high instead of variable, that's when this would splash um, and potentially uh, you know, come out of the uh, the blender here. So I always do this just uh, when I get it started as an extra layer of uh, security. So I have my blender set to variable on the lowest level, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my blender on. Okay. And now from here, now that I have it on, I can slowly increase my speed. And now this is all nicely pureed. All right. So once again, we're going to use our chinois to strain out our pureed soup. Pour right into our base here. Then we're going to use our rubber spatula just to work the th soup through our chinois. All right, so I've gotten <clears throat> most of that liquid uh, pressed out of my puree, just a very little bit of that uh, broccoli puree left in the bottom of my chinois. All right, at this point we're gonna put this back on our heat source. Just bring it back up to a simmer, uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, finish the soup. Okay, so to finish this soup, uh, we're going to go ahead and add just a little bit of heavy cream, just to give us a nice mouthfeel, a little bit of richness, and finally, a pinch of salt, and some white pepper.
want to check also make sure the texture is correct. You can see I have this really nice uh, thin nappe just coating the back of my spoon. This is exactly what I want to see for my cream soup. Mm, that's nice. So if this soup was a little bit on the thicker side, um, we could use either milk or a little additional stock to thin it out. Um, however, if it was too thin, if maybe um, maybe our measurements were wrong on our roux or we used a little bit too much stock, uh, whatever it may have been to result in our soup being a little bit thin, um, there's a few things we could do to thicken it. We could use a slurry. It's going to be a combination of starch and water. Uh, we could use uh, bourbonnet, which is going to be a combination of uh, fat plus raw flour. Or we could use uh, a little bit of additional roux, which is going to be fat plus flour. And all three of these finishing techniques would help to thicken our cream-based soup. Let's review. For our third method of making cream-based soup, we made the roux separate and added it in to our stock and vegetable before simmering. Next, when we pureed this soup, we used a blender. We could also use a stick mixer or food mill as we've demoed in our previous two cream-based soup methods. Lastly, if your cream soup is too thin, thicken it with either roux, bourbonnet, or a slurry, whereas if it's too thick, you can thin it with stock or milk.